We are celebrating today the greatest day in human history. We are celebrating today that he didn't stay on that cross. We're celebrating today that he did die on that cross and he did shed his blood. But we do not celebrate Sunday morning on Easter just because of the cross. We celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate because he did die. And we celebrate because he was buried. And we celebrate because he conquered hell, death, and the grave. He was risen. We celebrate this. You know what the greatest day ever was? Was the day that he came out of that grave. You know what the second greatest day was? The day that you accepted him for dying on the cross. When you accepted him, when you accepted what Jesus Christ did for you, it was the greatest day of your life. It wasn't the day that you graduated from college. It wasn't the day that you got married. It wasn't the day that you had your first child. The greatest day in your life was the day that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord. Because we have these 70 years down here, and that's great. But because we accept what he did, dying on that cross, shedding his blood, conquering death, we have eternity with him. Eternity. It is the greatest day that we could ever celebrate. On this Easter Sunday morning, we got up early, we walked outside, and we saw this beautiful day. And I was excited because I get to talk about the Lord. I get to talk about my best friend. I get to talk about the one that gave me life and the one that wants to give you life. You know, if you have your Bibles, if you would turn to Mark chapter 16. I just want to share just a couple thoughts with you. The Easter story, what you really have to do to get a complete picture of the Easter story is you have to take the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you really have to take each one of their resurrection stories. Because when you put them all together, you hear all of the story. One of the greatest things that we have is we have the story that, that Jesus had compassion. That Jesus died for a purpose. And Jesus loved us. Just what Cecil said over here, that he loved me. He loved me, so he died for me. I just want to share a couple thoughts that Easter is a great holiday because of the great kindness that it shares. I want to read a few verses, and it says, Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices, that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us. They had worry about how would they get into the body? How would they be able to anoint the body? But just as Rachel read at the start of the service, sometime Saturday night before Sunday morning, there was a guard standing post in front of that tomb. And God sent an angel down from heaven with a loud, heavy, large earthquake that was centered right over that tomb. To a point that the tomb was brilliantly lit up. And the stone was rolled away. And it came to the point that the soldier was as a dead man. He was in a coma, if you would. He was scared to death. He was frightened. And that angel came for a purpose. And that angel came to let us know that the body is not there. Jesus is alive. And he allowed us to look into that tomb. The angel did not roll the tomb away. So Jesus could get out. The stone was rolled away. So the ladies could look in. And when we can look into what God is doing within our life, it changes everything about us. It changes who we are. And it changes what we can do. The women came to anoint the body of Jesus. Because these women loved him. They stood beside him. And they ministered to him. But it was a great discovery. It was a great discovery because what they discovered is what we celebrate today. But when they looked up, they saw the tomb had been rolled away. For it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. Or they were frightened. They were scared to death. For the very first time in their life, 
and it would be the very first time in our life that an angel of God is standing there and talking to them. They were fearful. They were alarmed. They didn't know what to do. But this angel was showing compassion to them. This angel was to represent what Jesus Christ is doing for us. He wants to take care of us, and he wants to give to us our greatest need, and that is our salvation. When Jesus conquered this grave, he gave to us the ability, the ability to live life. And I love what this last part does, the great announcement. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going before them into Galilee. There you will see him, as he said it to you. So they went quickly and fled from the tomb, and they trembled when they were amazed, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, you know that these ladies had to really be afraid because they didn't talk to anybody. And I don't know if any two ladies could go walking beside themselves and not talk. So they always use up their 60,000 words in a moment. But um, they were scared to death. Let me point on something. And Peter. Go tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus wants to talk to them. Three days earlier, Peter was in the courtyard. Peter denied that he even knew Jesus. Peter was shamed. He disappointed his Lord. He thought he had failed. He thought that maybe he's done too much that Jesus would never even talk to him, let alone forgive him. And the heavens were watching. And the angel came down to communicate to Mary, said, go tell all the disciples and Peter. You know, you could put your name in there. I could put my name in there. How many times I have disappointed God? How many times I have failed God? How many times I did not do what Jesus has asked me to do? And Jesus still loves me. And even though Peter denied Jesus, Jesus still loved him. Even though you have failed, even though you have sinned, even though sometimes we maybe even denied. It would be saying, go tell the church and Bruce that Jesus still loves him. What a wonderful thought that even in our failures, our fears, and our insecurities, our worries and doubts, this Bible tells us that when we sin, Jesus still loves loves. It's one of the greatest things that we could ever have. And Jesus does this for a purpose. Jesus wants to point him out because he wants to restore him. He wants to love him and he wants to help him. The greatest story that Jesus can give to us is I love you no matter what. You can't do anything more for me to love you anymore. And you can't do anything less for me to love you any less. I love you. I loved you so much, I came to this earth to die for you and to live for you and to forgive you. There's not a greater story that we could have. You know, the, the name of Jesus is so awesome. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, it said, Jesus claimed, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You could also say it in our English language, he is the A and the Z. He is everything in between. Everything that you need and everything that you have and everything that you will need is brought into who Jesus is. He's the Alpha and the Omega. When we're hurting, where do we go? We need to go to Christ. When we're celebrating, we get to celebrate because what he has done for us. There's nothing that we have that he hasn't given to us or he hasn't allowed us to have. It is a day of celebration. It's the grand opening day of our life because of what he has done for us. You know, there's a lot of things within a name. 
The Bible says in the name is very important. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every con tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now there's a big difference between saying Jesus is Lord than saying Jesus is my Lord. There's a lot of times that we can talk about Jesus and we can talk a lot of stories about Jesus and we know who Jesus is and we know what Jesus has done. And there's a lot of times that we could talk about the stories of Jesus. There's a big difference between knowing about Jesus and that Jesus being my Lord, my Savior. When I say he is my Lord, that means he's the preeminent one within my life. He is my Lord and Savior. There will be a day that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But there's also a day that the second greatest day upon the history is the day that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord. Because when he is your Lord, it changes everything. You can say he is my Savior. He is my Lord. He is the one that took care of my life. He is the one that forgave me of my sins. Not just because I know the stories in the Bible. Not just because I go to church. I know he's my Lord and Savior because I witness what he has done within my life. There's a day in my life that I needed salvation. I was broken. I was sinning. And I needed help. And somebody told me about a story. A story about Jesus. And it was a story I've heard many, many times but there's something about this day that changed it. Something about this day that Jesus not only became a, a, a story in a book, he became the Lord of my life. Jesus. Very simple name. Back in the Bible days, it was a very common name. But Jesus now means so much different. Jesus in our culture means something. It means salvation. It means God saves it changes the way that we look at life. There's something in a name. Above that name, there's no other name. There's no other name other than Jesus that the church stands for. When we do funerals, and we do weddings, we do church services, there's nothing that I can communicate about other than Jesus that will help anybody's life. I can tell stories. I can tell good stories. But Jesus is the one that changes people's lives lives changed my life and I hope it changes your life you know there's 26 letters in our alphabet all you teachers know that I had to read that before I figured that one out but 26 letters which makes up words words makes up sentences sentences makes paragraphs paragraphs make pages pages make books books make libraries and libraries make our culture. The greatest book that was ever written, the most popular book that was ever written, do you know what that book is? It's the Bible. The Bible contains words that describe Jesus. The Bible is the greatest book that was ever written about the greatest man that ever lived, and he talked about the greatest event that has ever happened. And that's why we're celebrating it today. Jesus is the reason, not only for the season of Christmas, but it's also the reason for our life. It's our purpose. It's who we are. I want to read these to you. If you look at your alphabet, he is the Alpha, the Adonai, our Advocate, the Amen, the Second Adam, Almighty, the Author and the Finisher of our faith. He is the babe of Bethlehem, the bridegroom, the bishop of our souls, the branch of righteousness, the bread of life, the bright and morning star. Jesus is the balm of Gilead. He is the Christ, the creator, the cornerstone, the counselor, the comforter, the chosen one, the crucified one, and the chief shepherd of the sheep. He is the door, the day star, the delight, the deliverer, the desire of the nations. He is Emmanuel, the exalted one, the everlasting to everlasting. He is God, Jesus. He is El Shaddai. He is the first fruits of the resurrection, the fountain of life, the forerunner of the foundation of the church, the fullness of the Godhead. Jesus is the friend of sinners. He is God. He is good. He is the governor, our guide, 
Jesus is our good shepherd and the great physician. He is our hope, our helper, our healer, the holy one, the husband of the church, and he is our high priest. He is the great I am, our inheritance, our immortal, our invisible one. He is Jesus. He is Jehovah. He is our judge. He is our joy, and he is our justifier. He is the king, and he is the king of kings, and he is the king of glory. He is the keeper of the keys of death and Hades. He is the Lord. He is life. He is love. He is the liberator. He is the lawgiver, the light of the world, the living water, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the Messiah, the master, the mediator, God's messenger. Jesus is the man of sorrows. He's the Nazarene. He is the new wine, the new covenant, the name above every name. He is Omega, the offering for sin. He is the omnipotent, omnipotent one. You say that one hard. Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. He is the prophet, the priest, the Passover, the propitiation for our sins. He is the prince of peace and he is the pearl of great price. He is the quick and powerful, the word of God. He is the quieter, the storm of our life. Jesus is the redeemer, our refuge, the refiner, the rose of Sharon, the resurrection of the life. Jesus is the rock of the ages. He is our savior, our shepherd, our suffering servant, our sinless substitute. Jesus is truth. He's the teacher. He's the, the will of God. He is our tabernacle. He is the unblemished lamb of God, the unchanging God. He is the unction of the spirit. He is the vine. He is the vicarious sacrifice. He is the victor over death and the grave. He is the way. He is the word of flesh. He's the witness, the water of life. His name is wonderful. He is the expected Messiah, the Old Testament, and the exalted Lord of the New Testament. He is our yoke fellow, our yesterday, today, and forever. The same Jesus is the Zion, Holy King, hallelujah. He is our everything. From A to Z, throughout the Word of God, Jesus is proclaimed. He is the Alpha and the Omega. But let me tell you, he can be everything. But if he's not my Lord, he's just words on a page. But when Jesus became my Savior, he changed everything about my life. And he wants to do that for your life. He wants to change you. He wants to love you. And he wants to put your name. Go tell Glenville and Bruce. Go tell Glenville and Karen. Go tell Glenville and John. Go tell Glenville and Brenda. Go tell Glenville and Jessica. Go tell Glenville and Brenda that I want them. I love them. And I want to forgive them. Because when we put our name where Jesus loves us so much, we may have failed him. We have maybe denied him. But he loves us. And the one thing that he wants more than anything else, he wants to forgive you. If you've never accepted him, if today you're at a celebration that you don't know what you're celebrating because he's not my Lord, he's just a name that we're talking about, he wants to put you into his family. He wants to do that for you. And one of the things that he wants to do for all of us that are believers in Christ, he wants to put your name and he wants to restore you. He wants to love you and he wants to forgive you. I'm going to ask you if you please stand to your feet. A time of invitation, if you would. An altar call. We use the front of this church as an altar. It's a place where we reverently communicate and pray to God. It's a time that we can say, Lord, forgive me. It's a time that we can say, I need a new start. It's a time where we can say, I was wrong. And I want you to change my life. It's a, also a place where restoration can be given. It's a place where if we've never accepted Christ, it's a place where somebody could take the Bible and share with you what Jesus Christ did. Jesse sang that song. It was wonderful. Jesus went through all of that stuff. And he died. He was buried. But he's alive. And he's alive for you. And he's alive for me. We need to celebrate. We need to honor. We need to love. And we need to communicate. If you're struggling. If you're hurting. 
If you need forgiveness, if you need help, Jesus, he's the Alpha and the Omega. He is everything that you need. You can call on him at any time and he'll be here. He'll love you. He'll restore you. He'll give you what you need. Let's pray. Dear Father, break our hearts. We thank you for what you've done for us. We love you. And Lord, please allow us to see how great you are. Allow us to love you. Allow us to honor you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.